Signup forms are a simple but important part of any website. Today, we're going to build one using Shadsy and UI. But this isn't any signup form, because this one has client-side validation based on any requirements we want to enforce, like entering a valid email or character length. If you want to follow along, the starter code is linked in the description. With that, let's jump in. To kick off this project, I have a brand new Next.js project on the right hand side, and I've just gone ahead and cleaned out all the boilerplate. For this project, we're going to be using Shadsyn UI, which is an unsiloed component library that's really grown in popularity over the last year. We're going to start by using the form component from Shadsyn directly. And we're going to use the Shadsyn UI CLI to bring this form component into our project. So the first thing I need to do is I need to initialize Shad CN in our project. So for that, I'm going to go here to the terminal. I'm going to run MPX Shad CN UI at latest init and make this a little bit bigger. All right, which style do you want to use? We can say default, which base color slate, that's fine. CSS variables, yep. Great, and it initialized the Shad CN configuration in this components.json file, which you don't need to worry about. So now let's go ahead and do MPX Shad CN UI at latest add form. It's going to take a second to install the component. All right, and with that, it's done. So let me just run the dev server. So we get that going again. And now let's go ahead and actually look at the file structure really quickly. So you can see here, there's now a new components folder here, which I didn't create. And you can see in here, there's a UI subfolder. And within that, there's a button form and label. And these are the files that Shadsyn added for us. And this is what makes Shadsyn really cool is that it gives you the components embedded in your project. It's not a dependency externally. And so that means we could directly go in here and edit any of this functionality if we wanted to. And the other great thing about using the ShadCN form is that it actually comes with a couple of other really cool dependencies, Zod to power form validation and React hook form to manage form data and state. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump into actually creating the Sun form. So I'm going to start by just creating the overall page structure inside this component. I have a main tag. So let me clear out the content here and I'm going to create a section inside this main tag, a div and this div will be an H1, which will have, say sign up a P tag. And in this P tag, it will say already have an account. And then let's put a space in and I'm going to force the space by putting it in curly braces. And then I'm going to add a next link here as well. Now, this link is not really going to go anywhere for now, but this will be a, for a theoretical login page. And this is complaining because it needs an href. So let's just give it a hash as a placeholder. Now, if I hit save, the content's on the page now, but it doesn't look very great. So let's go ahead and style it. So in this main tag, I'm going to give it some tailwind classes. So flex, min height of screen, flex call, item center, justify between and a padding of 24. Okay, so this centers the content more or less. Then in the section tag, we're gonna add width of four fifths or 80% and a max width of five XL, which will help with scaling. So now this stretches it out a little bit. Then in this div, go ahead and give it a margin bottom of eight flex, flex call and a gap of two. That spaces it out a little bit. For this H1 tag, I'm gonna give it classes of text 3XL and a font of semi-bold. In this P tag, I'm going to give it a text small and a text color of neutral 500. And then finally, in this link tag, I'm going to give it some class names here as well. Class of underline and underline offset of four to make the underline a little bit away from the text. So now if it's save, we get this underline underneath login. All right, so that's the basic page structure keeping it pretty simple because honestly, that's not really the focus of this project. So now let's jump into actually creating the sign up form. So the first thing I'm going to go ahead and do is just create a new component. So inside the components folder, not inside the UI, I'm going to create a new file. I'm just going to call this sign up form TSX, create a new component. And let me just go ahead and bring this into the home page. And underneath this div, we'll just bring in the sign up form. And right now it just comes in as just a text signup form. Now let's go into the signup form file. We're going to start by creating the form schema for the form data to help power the validation for inputs. And for this, we're going to use a great library for validation called Zod. To set this up, we're going to go outside the component itself, actually. And I'm going to create a variable called form schema. 
And this is going to be equal to a Zod object. So for that, we can say Z, shorthand for Zod, and we'll say dot object. So this is the actual schema for the form data. So it's going to be an object. And this object is going to have a field for email. And this we want this to be a string. And we want this to be a valid email. So we can directly tell Zod that. We need a username, which will be, again, a string. And here I can tell it needs to be minimum of three characters and a maximum of 50 characters. And finally, a password, which will also need to be a string and a minimum of eight characters. Now, you can set up a lot more complex validation for each of these fields. For example, you can do some matching against a regular expression. For now, we're just going to use min-max and this email validation out of the box. So we set up the schema for our form data. Let's go ahead and create a manager for the form data and the form state that uses a schema. So for this, we're going to use another library called React Hook Form. And from this library, we're going to use a hook called useForm. So here within the signup form component, we're going to create a variable called form. And we're going to say useForm from React Hook Form. I need to give it what is the data type for the form data. And this is where we use the schema. So we can say z.infer. And then in here, just say type of form schema. And I need to give it a couple of parameters as well. We need to say what the resolver should be. So this is actually what validates the data in the form. We can just go in here and say solid resolver and pass in the form schema. And then I need to also give it what the default values of the form will be. And in this case, we're just going to say all empty strings. So email is empty, the username is empty, and the password is empty. And what I'm also going to go ahead and do is create a placeholder on submit function where if you want to take this and use it in your own project, you can just update this on submit function with whatever logic you want. Let's say posting to some database somewhere or some API. So we're just going to create a function called on submit. Here, I'm going to have the inputs be values. And because we have the form schema right here, I'm going to enforce essentially that the input to this on submit will follow the schema. So we'll say z.infer type of form schema. And then for now, I'm just going to say console log the values. Now let's go ahead and start creating the actual JSX for how the form is actually going to look like. So let me just go here and replace this div. And instead, we're going to first wrap all of this in the form component from ShadCN. Now, be careful here. You can see there's a form from React Hook Form, but we want the one from UI slash form, which is the one that ChatCM brought in. And we will just pass in here the properties from this form object that we created from this use form hook. Then inside this form, we are going to bring in a normal HTML form tag. And we need this because we need to power the actual on submit functionality that's baked into the default HTML functionality. And so here for the on submit, I would just say form dot handle submit on submit. And I'll also just give this a quick class name of space y4 to give some spacing on the form. Now, just taking a quick look here at this on submit. So this on submit property here is from the default form tag. And what we're doing here is the form object from React hook form has a handle submit function that we'll call and we pass in what we ultimately want the function to be here, which is this on submit we created. But this actually checks for us whether the form data is valid against this form schema and will appropriately deal with error handling and showing the validation as well on screen once we connect it up to some UI. But all the magic essentially happens here for us. And then finally, if once it validates it, it'll call our on submit function to do whatever we want with the values. All right. So within this form, we're going to have a few different fields. So for now, I'm just going to leave this as a placeholder. So these are the fields. And then finally, we're also going to have a submit button. So here I'm going to add a button. And this is also going to be from ShadCN. So this is a ShadCN button. It's going to have type of submit. And it's just going to say sign up. All right, so now if I hit save, we can't really see much yet. We just see the button at this point. We need to add the fields. Now, for the 
fields themselves, they all are going to be roughly similar with some nuances. So instead of repeating it ourselves, let's just go ahead and create our own custom component that wraps chat CN. Down here, I'm just going to create a brand new component. I'm going to call it sign up form field. And it's going to be a React functional component. And it will take some properties. And for now, I'll just call this sign up form field props, which will define. It's going to take some inputs and then we'll return some JSX here. Now, let me go ahead and quickly set up the prop definitions. So we'll just say interface and then this props name that we just defined here. And we'll give it a few different properties. So the first is a name property. And the name property is going to be of type field path from React hook form z dot infer type of form schema. And I'll get back to what this is. We have a label type string, a placeholder of type string, a description optional type string, input type optional type string, and a form control object, which is a type control from React hook form. And again, it will pass in the inferred type from the form schema. So this is the prop definition. Now, really quickly on this name property here, it looks a little bit weird. I know this is like field path property. Essentially what goes on under the hood, the way that React hook form identifies each field's connection to the data is it requires this name property to match the values that we define in this form schema. So for example, we need a field that has a property of type name of email, one of type username, one of type password. And that's how it ties those fields to the specific data properties in the form data. And so that's what this field path is doing. It's saying, hey, from this form schema, you infer the type from it from Zod. And then the field paths are essentially these names. So email, username, password. So what that means is that we are enforcing that this name property has to be, and you can see when I hover over it, it has to be one of email, username, or password explicitly. And the wonderful thing is now when I go here and Let's say tomorrow I want to add another field here. Maybe I add a date of birth field or something, and let's just make a type string. Now I hit save and it will error out, and that's fine for now. But now if I go down here and I hover over this name property, look at that. DOB is now as an explicit possible type, and it can't be anything else. So this is just awesome for just a developer experience perspective as well in building these forms. Let me go ahead and clear this so it gets the error. Oh, and it's erroring because we haven't returned anything yet. So let's go ahead and now add some return values for the JSX. So here again, primarily, we're going to be using ShadCN components. So we're going to start first with the form field component from ShadCN. And this is actually going to be what covers the entirety of this component. But you can see here, there's multiple different properties that we need to pass into this form field. So the first is the control object. So this will be the form control. And realizing right now that this is not being passed in because we need to explicitly destructure properties here. So name, label, placeholder, description, input type, and form control. So now these are accessible. So now we can pass in form control. We need to pass the name property in here and the big property, which is called render. And now this is actually how we want the field itself to render out. So this render takes in a field and then it says, let's output some JSX. And here, what we're gonna output is a form item, again, from Shad CN. And inside this form item, there'll be a form label. And this will just have the label content. Form control. And inside this form control will be an input. And this input component will take a placeholder property. It'll take a type. And this type, I'll say input type. And if it's not available, just set it to be text. And then I'll just say pass in the remaining properties from the field object. Now, I'm realizing right now that this is actually not being imported properly. And this is supposed to be from ShadCN. So when we realize this, let's go ahead and just add the ShadCN component for input. So for that, let me just clear the terminal and let's just run mpx shad cn ui at latest add input. 
go ahead and get the input component and now it's done. So let's run npm run dev. And now I should be able to import this from, there we go, UI slash input. So that's the shad CN. And then outside this form control, I'm going to say, if we have passed in a description, then let's return a form description component and the content will just be whatever we pass in as description. And then finally, underneath this, I'm going to add the form message component. Let's go ahead and import this as well. Now let's go ahead and hit save. So now that all the errors have cleared out, we're not seeing anything yet, but that's because we haven't used this new component yet. Now let's go ahead and quickly go one by one through each of these, just to make sure we understand what's going on here. So we talked about the form field, this sort of just wraps the entire field object itself and does some of this connection essentially up to React hook form. That's where we're passing in things like name, we're passing in the form control, things like that. This render function actually describes what we actually want to visually output. So again, here we have form item, which is a encapsulating component from ShadCN. The form label, this is the label of the field. Form control, this is any sort of control objects that we want to pass in. For example, here we're using an input, a text input here of different types that we can pass in. We're going to use the password type when we use the password field. The form description, which is text that goes underneath the actual text box itself. And form message, this is a component that takes care of showing any of the validation errors for us. So now we've created this form field component, the sign up form field component. Let's go ahead and use it. So the first form I want to add is for email. So I'm going to use the form field object we just created, and I need to give it some properties, of course. So the name here is going to be, look at that, are actually strongly typed for us. This will be email. The label will be email. Placeholder will be email. The input type here will be email. And form control will be the form object and the control property on it. Let's hit save. There we go. We have the email field showing now. I'm just go ahead and copy this and let's do the same thing for now the username. So the name here will be username. Label will be the username. The placeholder will be username. We don't need an input type here. We can let it just default to text, but let's go ahead and add a description and the description will say at least three characters and we'll have the same form control object. Now hit save. There we go. There's the username field. And then finally, we're going to create one for password. So name here will be password. The label will be password. The placeholder will be password. For the description, I'll say at least eight characters. The input type will be password. And form control will be a form control object. Hit save. And now we have the password field. All right. So now let's just go ahead and start playing around with this. So let's say I want an email example.com username username and password i'm just going to create a four letter password here instead if i hit sign up it says nope needs to be at least eight characters once it goes to eight characters now it's valid i can hit sign up let's say i go here and make a really short username boom it tells me that it needs to be at least three characters so user and let's try the email validation as well and just say hi it says hey that's an invalid email hi at Nope. And then it will stay invalid until I have a valid email address here. So with that, we've finished creating this wonderful signup form. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments below. And on screen now is another video for you to check out next, and I'll see you in the next video.